reclaiming I am We're reclaiming that rainbow. The, ro the rainbow. Okay. Okay. Right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers. Happy Mother's Day to all the women and all the girls, whom one day may be or may not be. But we celebrate all mothers. We celebrate all women on this Mother's Day. So I need all of the kids to come forward before we get going and doing anything else. All the kids come forward. All the youths. Come forward, and I want you to take and pass these out to all of the girls, yes, all of the girls, all of the women in the congregation, all of them get a rose. Oh, I thought it was... Me too. Okay. Me too. Thank you. All right. Has everybody got one? Yes. Oh, all right. Now, we, there's going to be a couple of them who are going to come in late. Like, we've got Miss Cheryl, who's back in the back, who's talking and not coming in. So we need to make sure that we get one. Okay. I want you to hold on. All right. See the lady who's coming in? Go back. Both of you. Run back there to her. Run, 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 run. And don't be afraid of her. She's actually a nice lady. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And in addition to that, Gabby. Happy Mother's Day, Cheryl. No, no, this, this, this is the Gabby thing, so yeah, yeah later. <laughs> All right. And because all of the ladies need a kiss Aww. for Mother's Day, so I'll pass those out to all of the women. <coughs> you know what? And if you're real special, you can get two kisses. Or a handful. Or a handful of kisses. And if it's been a while, take as many kisses as you need. <laughs> we have three viewers on the Unless you think that we just do the celebration before the service, we have uh, special treats for you after the service as well, so don't leave. Uh, we've got some treats in the refrigerator for you uh, to help celebrate and to help wash down all of the Mother's Day memories that you need. Turn to number 657 in your blue hymnal, number 657. And let's sing praises to our wonderful God and King. Two verses? We're going to go all three verses because there's only three of them. 657. I just didn't change it up there. <coughs> number six.
Holy Eucharist Rite 2 continues on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God. Back up. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The glory of page 356. <laughs> glory to God in the highest and, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and the King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy Spirit. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated and attentive to the reading of God's word. <coughs> Our first lesson comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 36 through 43. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bible. A reading from Acts. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with a request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a Tana. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 23. The psalm is found on page 612 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read Psalm 23 responsibly. By whole verse, I will begin. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in pastures, and leads me beside the still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall hear it. For 
spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Our second lesson comes from the Revelation of John, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bible. A reading from Revelation. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands, they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them in white in the blood of the Lamb. For this is the reason they are before the throne of God, and worshipped him, worshiped him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Praise be to God. You are able, please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to Glory you, Lord. Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I have given them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Jesus Christ. Please pray with and for me. In the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, be acceptable to you, our Savior. Father God, may only your words be spoken and your words heard. In this we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, and can I get the young ones to come on down? You are so cool. 
you're so bright, your future is you have to wear shades indoors. That's really pretty cool. Now, the reason I'm putting on the mask is because some of the kids up here have masks on, and I said that I would wear a mask if they were masked. If you don't have a mask, don't worry about it. It's all good. Okay? Um, how many of you know your name? Right? Your name is very special. So when your mom calls you by name, what do you do? You run, you answer, right? Your mom knows your name because she gave you your name. Your mom and your dad and your parents gave you those names and they're very important. And what I tell you about your name is don't let anybody mess with your name. Okay. Right? Well, like my name is Danny. Okay. I am Father Daniel. Father is my title. Daniel is my name. My parents did not name me Father Daniel. They, they called me Daniel when I was born. That's right. And my mom always called me Daniel. But when she heard people call, starting to call me Dan, hey Dan. Like Dan is, and they shortened my name. Because Daniel is the big name, Dan is the short part. Or they changed it completely. And my name is Daniel, and they started calling me Danny. Oh, Danny boy, there's so many in my name. <laughs> my name is Daniel. Okay? And so my mom told me a long time ago, she said, don't let anybody mess with your name. Because your name is important. Make sure that you always use all of your name. And so that has stuck with me. So I don't let anybody call me Dan, and I don't let anybody call me Dan. But there is one person who knows my name better than anybody else. Okay. Who, who do you think that might be? Yeah. God knows my name better than anybody else. Because God knows your name. God knows my name because he was there when I was born and he knows everything straight in. You are absolutely right. Absolutely right. And God is going to call each one of your names into service to him. You're going to, he's going to call. You know what? He might call you before he calls him. Yes. What, okay, what's your first name again? Asher? Asher. Asher. And what's your name? Ashley. Ashley. And he said, Asher, I want you to go make sure Ashley is not getting in any trouble. He may tell you, he may call you before he calls him. He may call you before he calls him. He may call her before he calls any of us. But the thing is, he's going to call you. And he's going to watch over you. And what you want to do is be listening for Jesus to call you and be ready to answer. Yes? Uh, possibly, if my mom actually hugged my brother after he was born, he would Your mom can call you just about anything she wants. <laughs> <laughs> right? Your mom can call you anything she, particularly on Mother's Day. Because you know what else she might call you? Hi, love. She might say, hi, darling. She might say, hi, baby. <laughs> hi, darling, baby. <laughs> You're right. Because if somebody if somebody calls you something that's not your name, they call you a loser, or they call you dumb, or they call you anything that's not your name. You, you know what? You don't have to answer them because that's not your name. That's not who you are. What's your name? Osley. Osley. What's your name? What's your name? Gabby. What's your name? Eli. What's your name? Let us pray.
pray that everybody will know your name as God knows your name and that you will only answer to who you are in God. fries half, uh, short of a happy meal, right? That her elevator didn't go all the way to the top floor. Uh, she was always going off half cocked, you know? She was marching to the beat of a completely different drummer in a completely different band, in a completely different state, to a completely different rhythm. And she'd be one of those folks that when you would meet her on the street, if you were bold enough to walk next to her, she might be one talking to herself. We now know that what she's got is she's got an earwig in and she's got a cell phone and she's actually having a conversation to somebody else. But you might not know that when you came up and then you encountered her. She'd be just walking around and she talking to herself, not bothering anybody and be by and large a really nice person, but not quite there or quite here. Well, as the story goes, she wandered into this one church and she was welcomed by the congregation and 
the church. And although she would always sit in the back because she might feel she didn't quite fit in. Nobody made her feel out of place. So she got quite into the habit of coming into that church. And one day she walked in by herself and she was all kinds of anxious and she was all kinds of nervous. And some pastor walked up to you and said, what's wrong? She says, I'm being followed! He looked at her and says, well, that could be a problem. Can, can you tell me about who's following you? I don't know who they are. But there's two of them, and they are always following me no matter where I go. He says, well, well, are they threatening you in any way, shape, or form? No, they, they're not really threatening me. Well, do they make you feel uncomfortable? Have they said anything to you? No, they, they really haven't. But I know they are back there. They probably followed me into here. So the pastor got up and looked at the door and goes, Oh, yeah, I see them. You see them? I said, Yeah. It, it would make sense why they are following you. They, they are there to help you, they are there to support you, they are there to comfort you. They are? Yes, of course. We read about them in the Bible. They are following you everywhere you go. Would you like to know their names? Sure. Well, that's our friend's goodness and mercy. They are following you wherever you go. Really? The Good Shepherd has sent them to follow you. <coughs> to watch over you, to comfort you, like your mother did when you were young. You remember that far back? Yes. My mom was a very beautiful woman, but she died, and my dad left. And that's when goodness and mercy started following you, to watch over you point you in the direction that you should go because the good shepherd you, you know the shepherd don't you yes who's the shepherd well, the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd the pastor goes yes the Lord is your shepherd and he is following you and guiding you everywhere to go no, they, they wrote a song about the shepherd. No, yes. And you know it because you've said it over and over again. And she had to stop and think for a while. And she got that moment of clarity. And she remembered the song that she'd been taught. As a child by her mother. I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff may comfort me. If you spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me, you have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Most of us would have learned this in the King James English. Most of us would have been taught that, some of us even in school. And although the new version sounds good, it sounds pleasant to the modern ear, there is nothing like it being recited in the King James English. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm is often sang, or sang, because it's a psalm, and said at funerals. But I'm thinking this is a celebration psalm. I'm thinking this is a psalm that's really appropriate for Mother's Day, because most mothers are shepherds. They have a flock. She knows them all by name. Even when she gets the names wrong, she knows them all by name. Amen? <laughs> <coughs> and the actions in this psalm are what every mother does, all the good mothers particularly. And even those mothers who haven't had children of their own, they do what is in this psalm. They make me lie down in green pastures. Lead me beside still waters. What do mothers want you to do? Take a nap. Please, take a nap. Lay down. Get some rest. And take a rest in the place where it's going to be safe. In the green pastures. Not in the rose bushes. Not in the briar patch. But lay down where I can watch you taking me beside still waters because what do we need to do? We need to drink more water. When we don't drink water, we get dehydrated. When we get dehydrated, we get cranky. When we get cranky, it's not a good thing for anybody. So mothers and shepherds nourishing us, making sure that we always have that cool glass of lemonade in the summertime, that hot chocolate in the wintertime, and water at any time. Restores my soul. My mom who used to watch over me like every mom ever watched over every kid. And as I was in Germany, I was bullied a lot. Um, I didn't know much about racial prejudice until I got to Germany. And then it confronted me in a really harsh manner. Well, as we were walking home from school, the neighborhood bullies would gang up on me and start calling me racial slurs, and I didn't have any idea what they'd be meeting until we got to a particular corner down the street where my mom, from the third window, from the third story bathroom window, go, Leave my son alone! And don't you know, there was nothing but heels and elbows after that. As all these kids started running away because they heard a voice from on high. <coughs> that was my mother watching over us. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. We shouldn't fear any evil at any point in time. But particularly when our mothers and the Good Shepherd is around us. We are always in the shadow of death. We are always in the shadow of death. And when we don't have a good shepherd, when we don't have a good mom watching over us, we might be in fear because we don't know what's going to happen. But for those of us who have Jesus as our shepherd, there is no reason to walk in that shadow because at the other end of that valley, there is a light in the canyon, and that light in the canyon is the eternal life which we are all striving for, which we are all promised for those who believe in Jesus. So there's no reason to fear. And I won't fear any evil. Because he who is behind me is greater than he who is in front of me. Christ in me is greater than the one who he has in the world. 
Now, to be completely honest, this next verse has caused me some discomfort from time to time. For thou art with me, always, because there's nothing I can do that I can escape mom's ever-knowing eyes. Amen? Any of y'all ever wonder how mom knew what you were doing whenever you were doing it? Because they were doing it first. We never came up with any new ways of upsetting mom. They always knew. Just as we always know what our children are doing. But it's that line, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. <laughs> Damn it! Give me a switch. And you better get a good one. Because if you bring me a wimpy one, and I gotta go out there and cut it myself, you will really be sorry. Anybody else hear them words? <laughs> Couple of you know exactly what I'm talking about. Because the woman that I knew I was about to get was one that I really deserved. But the good things about them whoopings, it was because they were done out of love. They were done to focus my attention, to listen to the words of correction that I needed to hear at that moment. When we do not discipline our children, when we would not discipline ourselves, would we not have run absolutely amok? It is out of love, deep, sincere, godly, divine love that that rod and that staff. Now, the rod was only one part of it because not always was not always were we whooped. There was oftentimes we would be moved in one direction or another from behind at that still small voice, that staff that was saying, you know, you need to go this way, you need to go this way, we'd be turning us in the direction that we would always need to be going like a, like a good shepherd would do. And that was always a comfort. And even today, where I am remembering and celebrating my first Mother's Day with my mom in heaven, I'm still hearing her guide me and comfort me and shepherd me and move me in the direction that I need to go. Mom prepared food. Not only for my friends, but for those people that I didn't like so much. She anointed me on a number of occasions. She anointed me with her tears. She anointed me with her prayers. She anointed me with her words. And even though my mom is not with me, my cup is still overflowing with her presence, still overflowing with her love. And because my mom, who was who knew the Good Shepherd intimately, my mom walked with Jesus personally. So she knew who was guiding her home ultimately. Made sure that I knew that goodness and mercy was following me all the days of my life. Because she knew and I know that it is the Lord who is my shepherd. As he is your shepherd. And with him following you each and every step. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And by God's grace, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Turning to page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 358, let us stand and affirm what we know to be true, as written for us in the ancient words of the Nicene Creed. Page 358, when I ask you, my brothers and sisters, what do you believe? Together, we believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of the heavens and earth. Of all that is seen and not seen. We believe in one power of Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternal God the Father, God from God, life to life, true God from true God, begotten by the name of one of the Father, who in all things for him, for our sin, for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. Who became a part of the first generation and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and lost his life. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in the glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have happened. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the gift of our God, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He is fully with the crowds. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Healing, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Prayers for the people for the Easter season are Form 4 and can be found on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer and on your online book. Let us pray for the church and for the world. We pray especially for Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Michael Hunt and Jerry Lamb, our bishops, and Daniel and Scott, our priests. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace that we need honor one another and serve the common good. We pray especially for Joe, our president, and Greg and Michelle, our governors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all our reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others, and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Today, we pray for Paul, Michael, Chance, Greg, Pat, Elsie, Kenny, Rick, Robert, Keenan, Brianna, Babs, Colin, Penny, Samuel, the Taylor family, Joe, Terry, Yolanda, Maria, Bertha, Tina, Nicole, Keith, Cheryl, and Kathy. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, we pray for High Plains Teen Ministry, St. James and Clovis. Trinity Church in Port Alice. We pray for all those in the military, all firefighters and first responders, healthcare, 
professional teachers and educators. We pray for those affected by COVID-19 and the conflict in Ukraine. Please add your own intercessions and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. Oh my God, we pray for abundant rain to break the drought and to help end the fires that are burning in the western part of the United States. Lord, in your mercy, we, are we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. We pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, we are very great. Almighty, eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and on earth, Mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On page 360, let us confess our sins unto God. It's been a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. Page 360 together. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against, against, against you in our word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done to undone. We have not loved you from our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. We have sinned against you in our word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done to undone. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may be aligned in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Dear saints of the church, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. Well, again, happy Mother's Day. Everybody have a seat. We got all kinds of things going on. Uh, there is a sign-up sheet out in the narthex. Uh, we are hosting a First birthday party for the baby of the church, Lorenzo. No, Lorenzo's baby of the church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're hosting a potluck. Um, normally you'd have a potluck and you say potluck and everybody brings whatever they is and it's truly potluck. Well, my parish administrator is way too uh, in uh, orient uh, details. <laughs> So he needs to know what everybody's bringing on his potluck. So there's a sign-up sheet. And this is not a bad thing. Um, we had a fabulous day yesterday. We had a barn sale. We had a blessing of the bikes. And we got blessed at the blessing of the bikes with things more than just bikes. We got blessed with an electrician who was able to come in and fix the uh, electricity in the women's stall. So that was worth the price of admission right there. And women go, amen. Yeah. 
Thank God. <laughs> better than an hourly. Better than an hourly. Better than an hourly. Ooh, all right. <laughs> Um, there's other things in the bulletin. Please read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them. If you read them, then I don't have to repeat them. Um, director has decided on his birthday to have a party. And he's going to have a party here at church. His birthday is the 29th, which is the last Sunday in the month. So we're going to do hot dogs and hamburgers, and we're just going to have a picnic on that Memorial Day, which is his birthday weekend, right before he takes off on sabbatical. So if you want to sit him off and find form, everybody's going to come on that Memorial Day, the 29th of May, the last Sunday in this month. After service, we're going to have a party, P-A-R-T-Y, because we can. Amen? Amen. Okay, so what day is it going to be? The 29th. And why are we doing it? Because it's Memorial Day and you're leaving. Because we're leaving. <laughs> because you're leaving. Because I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> now, oh, first, I just throw these slow pitches out there, and I'm glad there's somebody here who's got a big enough bat to swing at him and knock him around, so that's all. Right. <laughs> Birthdays and anniversary, I know Lisa Wookie who is a member of our Saturday service, who has been preoccupied with COVID and health care for these last two years. I know that she celebrated a, a birthday. Anybody else celebrating birthdays or any anniversaries that we got coming up here to celebrate? Happy birthday, Lisa. Any other announcements for the good of the congregation? Walk in... Uh, Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Um, I do have to tell everyone that I'm on the downhill side of the pole. So my voice is not what it should be. So please sing loudly and cover me. So.
Please bear. Praise God. Holy Sacrament in 
Preserve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all of your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All of this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as, our Savior, now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive both those who trespass against us. And we do not want to be patient. But deliver us from evil. The light is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set. He is our host and we are his guest. The table is open to any who are hungry, all who are thirsty, are welcome to come to this table. We would ask for those who wish to attain to the host and to the common cup to come first and that those who wish to drink from the common cup will then follow.
page 366. Let us pray. Together, Almighty Heavenly God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food and the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our processional into the world hymn. So true. 